Hello, and um, now I'm going to do the second page um, of the, actually the, the page three or side three of the semester exam review. Um, so the first one that we are going to talk about is we went through a whole bunch of metric prefixes that you need to be able to understand how to work with, but we only asked you to memorize three relationships. The relationships between milli and the base unit, which was gram, meter, liter. We ask you to know the relationship between kilo and the base unit. And we also asked you to know the relationship between centi and the base unit. And again, the base unit is grams, meters, or liters grams, meters, or liters. Now, in the case of the first one, <coughs> we have milligrams. Um, so that relationship is 1,000 milli units is always equal to one gram or base unit. In the case of km to meters, we have ki kilometers to meters, and we know that in one kilometer there are 1,000 base units or meters. And then lastly, the relationship between the base unit of liter and centiliter is that one liter has 100 centiliters inside of it. So again, those three relationships you need to know and memorize. Okay, I can use dimensional analysis to perform one-step conversions, and hopefully these were the ones that weren't too difficult for you. Um, and in all of these problems, there's in this particular part of the exam, we will always give you the conversion factor. And we will tell you where to round. So we haven't, in this part of the school year, we had not yet talked about sig figs. So we're asking you to round to the nearest whole number for these. Um, so that's kind of why we, but we will get into sig figs later, actually, in the next video. So the very, very first thing we do is we take our given piece of information, which in this case is 16.5 years. And you're asked to convert it today. So I always take my given and I put it over one. And now I'm going to look at my conversion factor and my relationship between years and, um, in this case, days. And I know that there's other ways to do this, but in our, but for this, uh, but, but for this exam, we're giving you the conversion factors because for us, it's more important that you know how to use the conversion factor you're given rather than what than memorizing a whole bunch of conversion factors. So when we do these problems, we always set them up so that the units cancel out. So if I have years um, on top, I want to put years on the bottom. So that cancels out. And because I'm looking for the unit of days, I'm going to put that on the top. So I'm going to put, um, now I'm going to fill in my values. So here I have 365 days is equal to one year because that's what a conversion factor is. It's the relationship between two different units that are the same value. And now I'm going to go ahead and plug these values in to my calculator. So we always multiply across the top and then divide. So you may recall that when we did this in the past, we would take 16.5 times 365 and we would have something like, I think I usually did it like this, 6,022.5 days over one year. Now, in this case, the unit for years cancels out, so that's really important. Now we would divide um, 6,200, uh, 6,022.5 divided by one becomes 6,000, um, becomes 6,000. 222.5 um, and now we are going to round it to have one whole number so that five will round that two up so the final answer is going to be 6,023 days okay now the next one we are going to convert 7,900 feet to miles and you're given the conversion factor that one mile is equal to 5,280 feet so I'm going to take my given, which is 7,900 feet 
and I'm going to put it over one and we're going to go to miles, right? So again, we're going to set this problem up so the unit of feet cancels out. And so that means I want to put feet on the bottom. Shoot, I should have done this backwards. I'm going to put feet on the bottom and I'm going to put miles on the top. And so now my relationship says one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. So we would multiply straight across, right? Um, and technically speaking, we would get 7,900 feet times miles for the unit, right? Divided by 5,280 feet. And so here you can really see that feet cancel out. Did this a little bit better this time. So I'm going to take 7,900 times 1, which is 7,900, divided by 5,280. And I'm going to get a value here of 1.4962121. Now we want to round to the nearest whole number. So if the whole number is 1, this 4 cannot round that 1 up. So the final answer here is going to be 1 mile. And I realize that that's not super accurate, but that's we hadn't quite gotten to that point yet <clears throat> in terms of significant figures. So that's our best answer here. Now the last one we're going to do real quick once is the relationship between quarts and gallons. And we're going to round again to the nearest whole number. So I'm going to take my given piece of information, which is 18 quarts, and I'm going to put it over 1. Now, I have the relationship of four quarts is equal to one gallon. I'm going to set it up so that my unit of quarts is on the bottom. So that cancels out. My unit of gallon is on the top. I'm going to fill in my values. One gallon is equal to four quarts. And then I'm going to multiply straight across. And when I multiply straight across, I get something like 18 times one, which is 18 quarts. Um, times gallons over four quarts. And again, hopefully you can see that the unit for quart cancels out, and I'll be left with the unit for gallons. So 18 divided by 4 gives me 4.5. And again, we're going to round to the nearest whole number. So this 5 will round the 4 up, so my final answer here is going to be 5 uh, gallons. Any questions about this particular part of the review, you might want to address them to your teacher. Um, but I'm going to stop here, and then I'm going to do the next side in a separate video, because that's all about sig figs. Uh, good luck studying, and if you have any questions, let us know.